Hello and welcome to Tell the People, a program of our Catholic faith with news and information in and around the Catholic Diocese of Lafayette. I'm Stephanie Bernard. In today's show, Trista Mattel has an interview with Father Jonathan Janice, a newly ordained priest. Father Michael Schaumpein's talk is about the moral teachings of the Church, the Ten Commandments, in the segment, What It Means to be Catholic. And in a conversation with Bishop Michael Gerald, Monsignor Richard Green interviews Bishop Gerald about another important topic. And now, Catholic news on this June 26 weekend. The Catholic Fellowship Network would like to extend an open invitation to all those in the Lafayette area. The month of June offers a full schedule of speakers every Tuesday evening beginning at 7 p.m. For additional details, please refer to www.catholicsfellowshipnetwork.webs.com. The Central Region of the Diocese of Lafayette presents Food for the Journey, a monthly lunchtime speaker series designed to help Catholics live out their faith in their daily lives. Guest speaker for July 5th will be Father Richard Kalowinski. Food for the Journey is held at the Crown Plaza Hotel, 1801 West Pinhook Road, beginning just after 12 noon. The Lafayette Diocesan Office of Christian Formation will sponsor a DRE CRE training day on Saturday, July 23rd. Sign in will begin at 8.30 a.m. and the day will start at 9 a.m. The deadline to register is Thursday, July 15th and all participants will be required to bring their DRE handbook to the training day. The Lafayette Diocesan Office of Christian Formation will host a DRE Religion Administrator Day of Prayer, Catechist Personal Spiritual Growth Experience on Thursday, July 28th. The event will be held from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the Immaculata Center located at 1408 Carmel Drive in Lafayette with sign-in to begin at 8.30 a.m. Due to summertime hiatus, Tell the People will be replaced with the following. The week of July 10th, TV3 and KSIG will air the most recent priest ordination. TV22, AOC, and KVPI will air the first mass of Father Nathan Como. The week of July 17th, respectfully, the 100th anniversary of Lafayette St. Paul's Church and the first mass of Father David Hebert will air. The week of July 24th, the most recent vows of Carmelite nuns and a Mass of Thanksgiving for Father Jonathan Janice will air. The week of July 31st, the Mass for Hurricane Protection and the first Mass of Father Garrett McIntyre will air. For further information, please check the July issue of Acadiana Catholic newspaper and or stations, local listings, and websites. Coming up next, Tris Littell has an interview with Father Jonathan Janice, a newly ordained priest. Hi, I'm Trista Littell and we welcome you to Tell the People. With me here today is a very special person, a newly ordained priest in the Diocese of Lafayette. We have Father Jonathan Janice, who was ordained June 11th in the Diocese. Welcome, Father. Thank you. It's so good to have you with us here today. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about who your parents are, where you're from, where you went to school. Well, my parents are uh, James and Rita Janice. Um, my dad's family is from the Church Point area. My mom's family is from the Ville Platte area. Um, I went to school at uh, first at Carver Elementary in Chitania, and then Chitania High School. I'm a product of a very small kind of high schools, the way high schools used to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I, um, I'm a member of Sacred Heart Parish in Ville Platte. Um, I studied at St. Joseph Seminary College for four years and then uh, Notre Dame Seminary. Uh, graduated from there and was ordained to the diaconate 
and um, spent a year as a deacon in a parish, um, St. Uh, Bernadette and St. Stephen's uh, parishes in uh, Bayou Vista and um, Berwick. Um, I was a teacher for a short time as I took some time out between uh, St. Ben's and Notre Dame Seminary and was a teacher for six or seven years and taught at St. Ed's, uh, St. Edmund High School in Eunice. And um, I uh, have some, had some very fond memories of there, learned a lot about teaching and uh, developed a love for teaching, uh, teaching the faith, which is what I taught there. Um, and uh, since I was a boy, I really uh, was thinking about uh, the priesthood um, and questioning about it. And it wasn't until high school that I really began to take it seriously. Um, I think being an altar server uh, as a boy helped me and inspired me. My father also uh, volunteered to teach catechism. And uh, through his example, I had a real uh, positive sort of impression of the faith and faith as faith being very important. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was real young, my mother taught me my prayers, and that was my first impressions, really, of, of faith and, and uh, of our Lord. Um, I have to say what, it, what has inspired my vocation has been uh, family life. And I believe very strongly that uh, families are, are real good uh, seedbeds for vocations. And, um, and it's not the only place a vocation can come from, uh, but it's a very good, uh, good foundation for vocations. And so um, I think in, in my ministry, I'll encourage um, family life and, and, and faith and, and encourage that as an inspiration for vocations. And, that we grow and into to being holy families. Holy I have families, a devotion yes. to the holy family. So yes. as you were saying that, it's certainly so important to not... Um, um, take our eyes off of our examples, make all the difference in other people's lives. Exactly. The way we yeah. live. Yes. yes. Um, well, Father, um, do you have a special devotion to someone particular, any particular saint, and why? Uh, actually, um, several. St. John Vianney, which uh, was one of the first biographies I read about a priest, um, and St. Joseph, you know, the the, the, the spouse of Mary, uh, I think, is a very in positive influence for priests, uh, but also for men in general, and a very good example of being a good father. Uh, and um, so I think that uh, St. Joseph is a very good, good example, and uh, certainly someone to pray to for guidance and help, uh, someone for priests as well as uh, for, for husbands and, and just uh, um, men in general for being a good example of, of what a man should be. Now you mentioned that uh, you were uh, there was the transitional diaconate uh, ordination and then the ordination into the priesthood. How have you grown during that period from transitional deacon to ordination to the priesthood? I think uh, I've learned to take myself less seriously uh, and sort of enjoy um, my my who I am as a person, what I have to offer, uh, but not to uh, just to just to kind of take myself more lightly, and, and I've kind of enjoyed uh, just the experience of ministry more with that. Uh, but also, um, I've become more sure of myself in dealing with and in, in, in interacting with others, and and in dealing with struggles and, and such. Um, I think one of the things that I doubted most um, is that I was too quiet and uh, too uh, just maybe not the kind of person that should become a priest. Uh, and I've struggled with that over the years and I think ministry has, has given me more confidence in that and in, in that I can do this and with the grace of God I can do anything. Uh, but the experience of doing it in ministry has given me more, more confidence and that um, this is something that I can do and our Lord is with me. How would you like to be remembered 50 years from now, Father? Well, I think uh, just being a good, faithful servant, uh, being a good father, uh, and um, being a person who helped 
to bring other people to Christ. I think that would be good enough. Of all the attributes of God, which is the one you most appreciate? Uh, God's mercy, the, the merciful heart of our Lord. You know, and in, in recent uh, months, I've developed a, a deeper devotion to the divine mercy of our Lord, and really have come to appreciate His mercy more and more, and, and the awesome mystery of His of His divine heart and that infinite and great love that we can we can't even imagine. Uh, it's beautiful and. and has certainly strengthened my devotion. So often um, we think about God through our own thoughts and our own standards and He's so huge and His mercy certainly draws me. I ha we all have to come yeah. under His mercy. <laughs> and right. what a gift, what a gift He's given us, our great faith. Well, what a gift it is to have you, a new priest in the Diocese of Lafayette. Thank you. Um, do you have anything that you would like to uh, ask our audience? And just to pray for me and to pray for the other new priest and to pray for the, all the priests throughout the diocese uh, that we can continue to persevere and be faithful to our Lord. Thank you, Father. We will certainly pray for you and we thank you for joining us today on Tell the People and we will hold, Father, and all of the newly ordained in our prayers. Coming up next, Father Michael Schaffine's talk is about the moral teachings of the Church, the Ten Commandments, in the segment, What It Means to be Catholic. Good morning, and welcome back to Tell the People to What It Means to be Catholic. If you're just joining us, we've been doing a series, at least at this point introductory, on the Ten Commandments. And we've dealt with uh, the human freedom and the human dignity, uh, how we judge moral acts to be moral, uh, when there's freedom and, and reflection, because we're made in the image and likeness of God, a human being has freedom, and so his acts can be judged either morally good or morally evil. And then we looked at the life of virtue last time, that when Christ came, Christ gave us a new power. He revealed uh, the commandment of love, uh, but he gave us a new power so that we might be conformed to him and live the life of virtue and thus become uh, like unto God, and so that our exterior behavior uh, might resemble the behavior of Christ. We want to look at uh, the breaches of that uh, life of virtue or uh, moral acts that are, uh, that are rendered evil. And so the catechism treats what we call kinds of sin or divisions of sin. And sins, uh, there's certainly a, a numerable uh, lists of sins in the uh, New Testament as well as in the Old Testament. We look at the commandments, what we shouldn't do, and of course the history of Israel and its disobedience and return uh, to, to Almighty God in the covenant, breaches of the covenant. We have in uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, the works of the Spirit against the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are plain, says Paul, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we can judge sins by, uh, their, uh, by the object, the, the very act that we do. And uh, many acts uh, there are that are possible cannot unite us to our final end, that of God, and giving glory to God. Other acts are pretty much neutral, and they must be judged based upon whether or not the circumstances are right for that act, and then prudence, uh, enlightened with faith, uh, uh, turns and directs that particular act, or the intention. What's our intention in doing this morally neutral act? So we can judge uh, uh, sins by either the, the object uh, of the, uh, they can be characterized by the object, uh, the act itself. And included in this, we mentioned uh, a few uh, conferences before, a few Sundays ago, that we can judge the 